can't wait for people to hear this podcast. I want people to be challenged. I want you to be angry. I want you to be annoyed. I want you to feel, oh my God, is that me? Do I do that? My name is Dr. Ronk Sakaria. I am a trans non-binary emergency medicine doctor and I am the presenter of The Bias Diagnosis. We live in a society, I guess, where um, <laughs> sexism is a problem. Everything, everywhere we go, everything we do, everything is gendered. It's impossible to think that people enter healthcare without views from outside. I guess if we speak about AFAB people, so that's um, people assigned female at birth, there is a feeling that when a AFAB person or woman says that they're in pain and maybe demonstrates like they're we're crying or we're maybe raising our voice or behaving in ways that outwardly reflect the distress that we're in or how vulnerable we're feeling, that that can be misconstrued as somebody's being difficult or somebody's, um, you know, uh, being hysterical. Oh, you're just hormonal. Oh, you're just stressed. Oh, you could afford to lose a bit of weight. Oh, is it possible that you might be pregnant? I think it's a shame that um, us as doctors and healthcare professionals sometimes see somebody as being unreasonable or not behaving as they should, rather than see that this is actually a symptom of an, a, a systemic institutional problem, which means that people actually present later and present when things are just here and they can't take it anymore. Cis men, able-bodied white men being used as the standardised vision for medicine means that anybody that deviates from that template can be um, maybe misdiagnosed or it's just taken medicine a long time to catch up with diversity. I don't believe that different genders feel pain differently. I believe that our experience of pain and our ability to articulate the pain that we're in and get what we need in response to our pain varies widely. There's also an intersectional lens that you can place on this in regards to how society perceives that women and AFAB people should behave. Young people say to me, oh, you know, um, sometimes my stomach hurts so bad because of my period, but I firm it up, I firm it up. Oh, you know, I, I don't want to tell the teacher I'm on my period. That, because the teacher's male. And if the teacher's female and the, the, the person says they're on their period, the teacher will be like, oh, I get periods, they're not that bad. You know, that minimisation and expectancy of AFAB people and women to just grin and bear and put up with things. And then when you get to, like, breaking point, you're seen as hysterical and crazy and wild. I said, I can't bear this. I can't bear this. And I started to break into a cold sweat. They said, you might feel some mild cramping. I did not feel mild cramping. I felt as though someone had torn through me with a red hot poker. This minimising and not taking seriously the pain of patients, regardless of gender, but specifically women and AFAB people, is something that just keeps persisting. I keep hearing, and um, I really hope that this um, podcast gets us all thinking about how we can just be and do better. I want people to see that when we interrogate norms, we're not interrogating you as a person. We're interrogating a society, a systems that allow us to behave in certain ways that don't always benefit each other or ourselves. And I want healthcare professionals like myself to reflect and think about how we can be better because ultimately if we are continually interrogating our behaviors and our practices without ego things can only get better <laughs>